The film begins with a man named John Otway entering a bar while carrying a sniper rifle. The bar is full of workers from the oil facility, and it doesn't take long for a fight to get started. John grabs a drink while a montage shows him also writing a letter to his wife. Several flashbacks show him lying next to his wife while he writes in the letter that he knows he can't get her back. The next day, it is revealed that John is working as a sharpshooter, killing wolves and protecting the workers from being attacked. That night, John puts the gun into his mouth and thinks about ending himself. However, he stops when he hears a wolf howling. Later, the workers from the oil facility enter a plane that is supposed to take them to the anchorage. John takes his seat, and soon a young annoying man who speaks too much sits next to him. John tells the man, Todd, that he is not in the mood for a talk, so Todd moves to a different seat. During the flight, the plane starts shaking. John is watching a dream, lying next to his wife, but he is taken abruptly out of it once he understands that the plane is going to crash. He fastens his seatbelt tightly and wears his oxygen mask while the plane is taking a dive. He soon loses consciousness and dreams about his wife again, but then wakes up covered in snow. He takes a look around and he realizes he is in the middle of Antarctica. He sees that there is a part of the plane's body nearby and walks closer to it. He finds a man trapped under some pieces of metal, but he keeps moving in order to find out if there are more survivors. Soon, he finds more of them. Some men are gathered inside what's remained of the plane's cabin. One of the men is seriously injured, and the rest of the crew has no idea what to do. John checks on him, but the man can't be saved. John tries at least to keep him company, asking him who he loves. The man starts talking about his daughter while his life is being squeezed out of him, and John tells him to let his daughter take him away. After the man dies, everybody is in a terrible mental state. John has to take matters into his own hands and instructs the rest of the men to gather any kind of things that can burn. They need to light a fire, or else they will die tonight. Later that night, John sees a wolf eating one of the dead bodies. He tries to scare the wolf away, but the animal now attacks him and bites his leg. The rest of the crew comes to save him, and they manage to beat the wolf away. While they take some time around the fire, they start discussing what they should do next. John lets them know that there is a possibility they have landed near the wolves' den. If he is right, it means that the wolves will attack them again once they get the chance. Some of the guys wonder why they need to listen to him, and John reveals that he was being paid to protect them from the attacks of the wolves. Therefore, he knows a thing or two about them. Some others like to think positively, and they wonder if the wolves will always be looking to eat meat, or they eat other stuff as well. Unfortunately, John knows that the wolves will be coming for them. What they need to do now is to carry the dead bodies away from them and also start looking for some food for themselves. While they start moving the bodies, one of the guys finds something valuable on one of them. John sees him stealing from the bodies and immediately tells him to put everything back. They are not going to loot the dead. The man disagrees with him, but John tells him he will start beating him up if he does not put the stuff back where it belongs. Later on, the group hangs around the fire until they are met with an unpleasant surprise. John hears a noise and grabs a torch from the fire. The men gather behind him, and they soon see a dozen pairs of aggressive eyes staring at them. John tells everybody to hold their ground and to stare back at the wolves. The two parties size each other up, and the wolves eventually leave. John suggests that they need to take two-hour shifts if they want to make it alive through this night. He starts the first shift, but sometimes he drifts away to sleep and dreams about his wife. Thankfully, he wakes up again before any harm is done. Then, he wakes up the next guy in line and warns him to not drift away into sleep. The man does not fall asleep, but he has to adhere to nature's call soon. While he does what's necessary, a wolf attacks him and tears him apart. The next morning, the humans wake up out of pure luck. Nobody has been watching their backs since the guy died during his shift without waking up the next person. After they find his dead body, John concludes that the wolves will never leave them alone. They have marked this whole territory, and they will want to get rid of the humans. One of the guys, Diaz, wants to stop listening to John, but all the other men take John's side. John claims they need to move further and be ready to stand their ground against the wolves. He collects some oil from the plane while he also stumbles upon a wallet. He tells one of the men, Hendrik, to start collecting the wallets of the victims. If they make it back to safety, they can give the wallets to their families. While the group is ready to move on, Hendrix stops everybody as he believes they should utter some words for their lost friends. 
Although he does not know any official prayers, he thanks God for keeping them alive because they might as well have ended up dead. Then he pleads with God to continue helping them and the group is ready to move on. They start walking, but they prove to be unlucky since a minor storm slows them down. Todd falls behind and starts yelling that they are going to reach the forest without him. Soon, he is attacked by the pack of wolves and they start eating him up. The group of the humans see him and run towards him through the thick snow, but it is too late for Todd. After Todd dies, the group has no choice but to keep moving. Diaz proclaims that they would be safer if they stayed back on the plane, but John explains that the wolves would have surrounded them easily. Diaz believes the wolves might be surrounding them right now, and it seems like his suspicion becomes reality. The pack of wolves attack them again, but this time the humans are lucky enough to be near the forest. They light up a small fire and manage to scare the wolves away. Soon, John brings some sticks for the group and tells them they will attach a bullet on the tip of each spear. Hopefully, the bullet will explode if they burn it on the fire. Diaz does not like the idea, and he gets in an argument with John. The argument leads to him pulling a knife and threatening John with it. However, John outsmarts him and ends up on top of him. Their fight has to stop as a wolf now approaches the group. The humans are very careful, but the wolf leaves after a few moments. Diaz asks what the wolf wanted, and John tells him that it probably wanted Diaz. Indeed, the wolf comes back and attacks Diaz from behind out of a sudden. The group helps Diaz, and they manage to put the wolf down using the improvised spears. A terrified and full of adrenaline, Diaz attacks the fallen wolf, stabbing it about a million times. Jackson from the group mentions this is a big wolf, believing it is one of the strong ones. However, John explains this wolf was probably an Omega, an outcast who was sent by the Alpha in order to test the humans. In any case, they will now cook the wolf and eat it. While they do, Jackson starts feeling tired and takes a seat. However, he jumps back up when they hear the wolves howling. Diaz gets mad at them, and he chops off the Omega's head, throwing it back at the wolves in order to taunt them. However, that makes the wolves howl even louder and more aggressively, to the degree where John tells the group they have to move. Indeed, they walk to another spot and set up a new fire. Jackson has fallen asleep, but suddenly he wakes up asking about a woman named Emma. A guy from the group, Talget, knows that Emma is Jackson's sister. Diaz wonders if Jackson is okay, but Talget explains he is probably suffering from hypoxia. His brain can't receive enough oxygen, a fact that causes him to have hallucinations. The men spend some time together and they share details about their pasts. John remembers his father, who was a drunk that often got involved in brawls. However, he had a thing for poetry and used to recite various lyrics. Later in life, John came to understand that his father actually wrote those lyrics himself. The group's peace is interrupted by an upcoming blizzard. This is going to be a tough situation for them as they are probably going to lose the fire. Indeed, the group takes cover behind some trees, but that is not enough for Jackson to stay alive. The next morning, the group is able to hear a river, so they believe they have a better chance of finding a shelter if they follow it. But in order to get there, they have to jump on some trees on the other end of the cliff's gap and then carefully lower themselves on the ground. They are able to create a rope and Hendrik makes the jump. After a combination of luck and strength, Hendrik makes it to the other side and ties the rope. Diaz and John make it through, but Talget is too slow, causing the rope to break. He ends up on the ground injured and the wolves finish him off before dragging him away. While climbing down from the trees, Diaz hurts his leg. He tries to keep up with the other two, but at some point he decides he has to stay back as his leg won't support him anymore. After parting ways with Diaz, John and Hendrik keep walking until they are attacked by the wolves and end up in the river. Unfortunately, Hendrik's leg gets trapped between two rocks and he can't be saved no matter how hard John tries. Being the last one remaining after this adventure, John takes a look at the wallets of all the men that were lost. The pack of wolves soon starts surrounding him, but John exclaims he doesn't care about what happens. All the wolves move aside when they hear Alpha's strong howl. John remembers his wife one last time, saying to him to not be afraid. He grabs three liquor bottles and a knife and wraps them around his hands with tape. B breaks the bottles on a little rock in order to use their sharp shards. Then he starts reciting one of his father's poems and is ready for battle. Finally, the film cuts to black without showing any part of the battle. However, after the ending titles, 
An extra scene shows us the alpha wolf lying on the ground breathing heavily. 